Hi guys, it's me, Just Lundin again, and in this video that's dedicated to my birthday month in 2024, I just like to talk about the last movie of the original Matrix trilogy, Matrix Revolution. And that boy is a real revolution in this movie. The effects are great. The idea is good. And so it does special effects. But the story is a little bit dumb. I can't lie, it's a little confusing. So let me get, let me just get this thought right off the bat. But before you do that, let me just say that this is a little dumb. No, no, I see double CD things. The dually ones. Where well, I will be talking about the other half of the movie. The Animatrix. After I discuss the Resurrection movie. Because, I don't know, that, that's the proper. You know, I'll be doing each, each uh, each segment separately, except, except for the second ransom one. But, um, yeah, this movie takes place right after the, the second movie reloaded, which makes a lot of time being that they filmed back to back, which I think the only other movie too that did that was. Back to the future and possibly Liam Lord of the Rings. I'm not too bad that way I think that's what happened. So anyway, we see that if we see that he just he has um uploaded his his um his um persona into being which is played by um, Ian Bliss now I think today I barely got this guy because he looked like Hugo Weaving Hugo Weaving which does a very excellent job in playing Mr. Smith or uh, G-Man if you will now um when he Bliss does this little monologue as Smith, when he finally revealed himself to Neo, he resembles, um, he resembles, um, the name, um, because it means the Twilight Zone, um, I can't think of the name right off the top of my head, um, Anyway, it will come to me. So I mean, after after he gets um after he faints from the from at the end of the movie uh, at the end of the reloaded movie, you see him uh, that he went to this place called Mobiles Avenue, which is an anagram of limbo, which in in the Christian. Uh, Mythology, more of a like a way station between going to heaven and going to hell, like an in between place, which is kind of similar to what they do in the Matrix, where he like um like a he like um supposed to be um <clears throat> caught in between the land of the the machines and the land of the real world. <clears throat> okay, R Ryan Sterling is the guy that made the, 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 the movie, um, the yeah, Twilight Zone show. Yeah, Ian Bliss reminds me of Ryan Sterling when he did the little speech. So, I mean, <clears throat> they, they have the, they have the, um, let's put the, um, where they have 
<clears throat> we we have um two flying on the ground on the on the cards and they have Neo in limbo in that limbo effectively where he can't get out of the area and he, he can't get anything that comes into the area because he's stuck there for all eternity based on what the Merovingian wants and the Merovingian wants a trade between Neo's life and the Ice the Oracle which after he meets the other people in the group Sarapa Morpheus and Trinity that, that goes out the window but in, in the meantime Neo is pretty much at the whim of, of the, the Chameleon which is um loyal to the uh, Merovingian which is in turn based on the devil the concept of the devil with Persephone being his wife and stuff and um, I don't know what the, I guess the Tramium would be the equivalent to be, um, what's his name, um, the boatman, um, um, Karen, yeah, that's Karen, which would be the question, you know, because the Tramium was able to beat Neo, and since he makes the rules around Mobile Avenue, who would who, who be who? Um, the train man or, or agent Smith? You know, upgraded agent Smith. Because um, they'd be two very powerful entities in the computer world. So, who would defeat who? And when you get introduced to two more characters, and um, uh, Kamala, um, Ramakandra, and the daughter is Tati, which Ramakandra gives, gives him a, uh, gives Neo a little speech about karma and love, you know, they're both words, but it's what you ascribe, you ascribe to it, the meaning behind it, that gives it power. And, you know, I wish I, wish I, I, wish I could say something smart, like, uh, you know, about love and that, but I, I've had, I've, I've had no luck with that. In any case, um, we get the feeling that these people Fear the same man, and they fear the mere vengeance. I grant is a hostility toward what Neo did to his chateau in, in the previous movie, and has a supernatural guard, which I'm sure I probably cost a lot of money to get. And he said, He doesn't forget, and he doesn't forgive. So that means it's a good of customer. But, um, Trinity and Morpheus and Serac go into the club where the Meridian is living right now. And he, and they, um, they do like a, we get knocked off of the, um, uh, scene from the first movie where they do, uh, slips and kicks into little black slips in, in lo a lobby and they shoot up the place and they force their way into it and then they do like a routine Mex Mexican send-off where each one holds the gun like this and they have the back to each other to the back but um I, I, I have this one question for you guys. For those of you who watch this movie and who liked it like I did, why is it that they're allowed to do this, 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 this thing? I mean, if, if the machines know that, that they're wanted people, 
and they knew that they liked Terrence and all that. And according to the first movie and the second movie, any agent can easily um, hijack one of the, one of the people in the, in the dance crowd and make them into their own their own copies of themselves. Like that's already so checked in the matrix. So why don't you do that here? You know, why don't you just take, take the guys out by, uh, by, um, transforming into an agent, shooting them in the head at close range, and then that'd be the end of it, that'd be the end of the movie. I guess the, the Wachowski didn't really think that far ahead. Uh, they didn't, they, they didn't kind of consult the whole book and stuff. And then anyway, they, they allowed to see the mayor of Indian just to kind of piss off them and they want to, they want, he wants to exchange Neo for the eyes of the Oracle. He wants to be able to see the future. And to so Trinity said, enough of this shit. Grab the pistol, hold it to the guy's head. He, he, you know what? The, his wife, Persephone, is getting off on the thing. Oh wow, she will die for him. She loved that much to die for him. So fuck off, husband. I'm tired of you anyway. Now, um. She, he, he, cheats on, he cheats on him with other women, and I'm assuming men do. But my question is, why? You know, if your wife had the body of Monica Bellucci, why? Why is she, why is she on someone like that? Where, whatever. So then they, 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 they go to Neo, he, he is rescued. By Trinity and Morpheus and Seraph, and they go over to him um, and deal with other things. Now, I should point out that by a pure coincidence, the chairman is played by Bruce Spence, the same guy who played the gyro captain in, in, um, in, uh, the Road Warrior. I didn't do that on purpose, but it happened to be that way. So anyway, they get they get rescued. You know, the, the people of Nebuchadnezzar are trying to uh, find out who Bane is and what his story is, and you know what happened to the crew of the, the, the logos, the ship that they were on. What, why everything went to shit on the ship. Now, we also get a shot, a shot of Zaya preparing for the inevitable attack of the machines. Giant squid like uh, monsters that want to kill every human being under the direction of the, the um, Machine Overlord or the Architect, which I have to I have to ask the question. Okay, if Dave's X is the physical manifestation of the machine's intelligence, right, and he takes the form of a baby of a baby head, uh, it wouldn't wouldn't that make him the same? The physical representation of the architect too, meaning that they both move over the matrix and that they're like the heads of their own, their own uh, um, parts of the matrix plus robot city and stuff. Wouldn't that make them the same people, the same entity, you know, the same being, or not? You know, because I know that that. 
the defects like the physical representation and the architect it did the representation of it. So that, that's a good question. I've always had that question. Ever since I was a little kid, for sure I had school and there's no cat in 03. So, it also shows that Sati has a real good relationship with the, um, with the Oracle. And the Oracle is played by a different actress than what they, put, what they have in the last two movies. I like, I like the way they have the Wachowski here, but that as they, as they wrote about. Because they said that because of a tweet that the Oracle made her, um, as she looks, she will have to change. Uh, I like other good actresses at the Oracle, but the only thing is that they wrote it, they, they wrote it out to that she would, her shell or our code was changed because of her action in helping the resistance out. But the real reason why she changed I to ten because the other one simply died. I think of lung cancer, I believe, from a choice of smoking a cigarette. So, by right, you know, that, that she died because of what she made was accurate. The what happened in real life, but um, they just did this in the movie just because, you know, because it sounds a little bit more poetic, I guess. So, the look in the in the other in the first movie, she has like a, an, an affinity for people with special gifts, and that's when Sadi has a special gift. Now it's funny because we have her uh, baking cookies for Neil and for the others in, in the in the building and whatnot. But she didn't. she ends up getting a smell that smell that's coming, and um, she sends her the way with uh, Serac as the protector. Uh, I love I love Serac as a character. He's awesome. He's divine. He, he, no nonsense. Which really says him seem die in a fight with with Tom um, with um Smith. But um Smith ends up um getting um you know, fighting him and and taking over um I guess taking over Sadi's body and, and then warping it into his own image. Much like he wanted to do it everybody. And he, he um when the Oracle said what did you do to with Tati? This this book is really real creepy. And really disturbing I don't know the way he, he wrote this in there, but he was a cookie cookie he love like everything else. To which the Oracle said, you bastard. And the, the idea that it's implied that he killed her. He, he, um, he absorbed him, absorbed the girl in his field into himself. But to say I could, that he needs love like everything else, I could need love like everything else, kind of implies something sexual, something perverted. So that that's wrong they, they put it there. They should have he should have something like um oh he she got absorbed into him. Whatever. So then they put he, 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 like that he called her mom because she is the mother of the matrix. The corner of the second movie. Now, when it comes to the absorption of the Oracle, 
I like, I like it. Good. It shows that he, that you know the method a virus like incorporates everything into itself and keeps on the planet on control. But he has a system of um, care when it comes to his his loved ones. For example, like um. Rather than to ripping into a chest, he doesn't need you and know, everybody else in the Matrix. So actually, um, he, 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 he does to rest to eliminate most of the pain. This is similar to when, um, when the, um, Colonel takes the book, takes the professor in in the movie uh, Hellboy went into the something at his front. He pain, he rubs the pain of the studs in the back of the neck, and they put me and kills him that way. I forgot my name. Cronenberg, Croner or something like that. So anyway, did that. And then everything within the room of the matrix in the room there goes haywire and go nuts and stuff. Which is fine and good because she was like a divine slash important construct in the matrix. And then he does the evil act too, which I love. love I love you, you wings. Um, I, I can consider him because he was a good go government G-man type character, which I don't know what, what, what happened to the other models of the agents, where are they? I don't, I don't know where they are. I, I want I my number two and number three, damn it. I'm going to the Wachowskis over there. So anyway, um, they also cut to the real world in which they have a, the, uh, APU, uh, the trail fight, um, the Sentinel Army. Now, uh, I like the, the army, the lineup of the army in that Zion using machine and stuff, but that first a big you know, why have a, a, a you know that these machines were included when well, why well, about you got that stuff? Well, why do you have um, <coughs> these um, open cockpit type um, make units? You, you know, you have these, they're pretty much like a make units from, uh, from the av Avatar movie from the first one, like the Avatar the second one. They're pretty much uh, like, like, you know, that, no open carpet, with no carpet, no protection. And that brings them in the ass later on. But, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a stupid concept that have an open air seat, seat. Where anyone can just shoot gear. You got a sniper, you got laser shot, you got this, you got that. And you would think that you would think of machines like that would use like um, a long distance laser or a long distance firearm of some kind to take out a long distance uh, threat rather than melee combat. Granted, they are very efficient at it, but still. And also, you would think that they would attack with, like, they have one big drill that goes down into the main dome of the dark area. But you would think that they would have more efficient ways to do it. Like, you would have, like, multiple drills going at one time, going kind of fail, on one spot into the area. And Another thing too, the commander, commander lock, 
demands that all the uh, that he gets all the APU units <laughs> and has the internet in his tree. You would think that maybe it'd be a lot better to have all the infantry there, but I'm not a military strategist. You know, I would assume that that they will want more of the world. They want, you know, they, they, they took that for, for a reason. Maybe they protect the other people, but it just doesn't make much sense. So, anyway. If I was a machine leader, I would want for the um, one drill to drill ahead to um, the, t the temple area where, where the majority of citizens will, will be staying. Because I, I know that's unfortified, it's unprotected. There are more. There are multiple, multiple um, ways to do this. Like you can make a big cave in, you can have some kamikaze drones in there. There are, there are many ways to squash humans that they were in there. But they did, they don't. They just want to go, they want to shoot. Pull their um, forces into one, one little spot. And all the APUs shoot at that one spot with all the gun turrets aiming at that one spot. By the way, I love when and they have a little, um, little single, single, single guy going across the wall and to get the turrets and went out from the side with the unprotected, the distant element or whatever. That was so really fun. And I know two, two things about this part. Number one, they are being killed by the hundreds, probably the thousands or ten thousand, the little sentinel units. But yet, they, they never show the body piling up. I thought they did show them piling up on the well, then pathway to the top, but they don't actually show the um the huge amount of so that we probably gathered. Number two is that uh, uh, I love whenever they uh, whenever they uh, bunch up and have the the um, the flow comes so much that the if you comes and if I can't do anything about it. But I love whenever they, they expand to be like a claw hand and then they converge again and then to all the APU guys there. But there's another noise about this. Part two. The humans are trying to fight the machines in like uh, the real world. And the real world looks like an artificial thing made in the computer, made in the computer world. But, um, the real world made by the machines to, to imprison humans more, more or less, um, uh, look more, look more real than the art, than the real world does with the, what they were made by the, the makers of this movie. Does that make sense? The real world looks thicker than the artificial world. So anyway, um, they all thought where they have a Naomi Morpheus lover who's also called uh, his first flying skill being able to fly in the mechanical um, area of a pipeline or an opening and uh, he said three different times people always want more how good you can drive 
to where I say, you better see that a wife or husband coming and smack you in the face. Now, it's a good point that um, Agent Smith ends up taking over the entire, the entire digital world. Now, well, like Jim Pretty Good, what happens to people that are in the pods? Do the people in the pod just change into it? And that's somebody of Agent Smith. How did that work out? And then when you put the T in the, in the, in the end, they all revert back to what they were beforehand. Or do, do they just keep their bodies and the and the text of me it just in the magic world? That's a good question. Need need it. <sighs> I mean, we also, um, <clears throat> my way, during this whole thing, there's no sound of men revenging the train men or birds of the Even when the major priest at the end. Now, um, they all show like a, some, some action from that. Lincoln and his wife. Which makes you had to stay behind and make cells so the big bazooka type thing to take out um, the drills as well as all the sentinels too. And uh, they also, um, <coughs> they also, in the real world, they show that. Trinity and um, Neo have to go to the machine to the end, make a deal with them for peace. And um, Bane and the unconscious, we, we can kick him butt, and then, and then blind Neo, it'd be more like a, a disabled figure. And um, he ends up defeating Bane, which he realizes is, is an agent. It's meant because the heat, the oracle of the heat, your opposite. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll, get to, I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, he takes a big crowbar and smashes his face out with uh, the crowbar and he takes the, the face in like the weird um, golden um, flame energy of a blind Neo. Now blind Neo is kind of cool. I like the vision. I wish that, I wish that kind of thing really did happen for people who are blind. But I can't, I can't, um, comment on that. But, um, anyway, it's nice to see that Trinity is still streaming by a man, even though he is disabled and whatnot. So, good, good girl, girl. So, the, and the parents fly over to, over to see, and I like the fact that they show that no human ever got to win in. 100 kilometers of, of Michigan City. So that, that shows that um, it, it has a whole new opportunity to show like new, like, um, new um, defenses that no other human had ever seen before. The little weird kamikaze bomb that the, those chips shoot at them. And stuff. It's a like, kind of cool the way they do that. But, but you will also they would employ like um an EMP black. You know, far away from the city of course, but the machines could use an EMP black to disable the ship. Would do something and something more efficient. 
I mean, I don't know, like, like in slumber, like in strike, or whatever. And they go beyond the atmosphere into sunshine. I don't know what quite is exactly. The people said the love swimming ship. But it does, it beats them up. And then Trinity ends up crashing the plane into the ground. Now, I like the way they have to recharge the ship in the middle of the lever but uh, they did in Jurassic Park and um you like do it slowly and then try it again and uh right, right before she crashes in, into into the tower or something and, uh, then it's like holding her hand and he's like you know you, you gotta come with me like no, 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 I'm, I'm dead. Come on, come on, Trini, let's go. No, no, I'm dead. They, they made her into Shishu Bob. I mean, we, uh, you know, I, I don't have any, uh, I can hold any uh, high marks for her anyway, because her name is Trinity, so that represents like the cross. So, Look what happened, Jesus on the cross. And there you have it. But they will bring it back again in the next movie anyway. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that in this movie they have the kid in there from the, from the Matrix, from the Animatrix. The thing kid is the nearest thing. He's in this one. Depending on you know, helping out with the play, then helping out the commander with the machine gun, and then later on he opened the gate for, uh, for uh, Naomi and all the crew over there. Come on in. By the way, I like the way the, I like the way the, um, Santo defeat the, uh, he, he didn't do a hover pod. Like getting up close and then blowing up from the inside out. And therefore making it sluggish. And giving it a big fat ass, like I always said. Now, it's funny that you got a big high tech chip, but yet all the um, fire mechanisms and the UI look, look like um, they do for um, like a basic. To a hard game. And that's the point that they show, you know, they show a hot stick gun to a, like an Atari B system, you know, farming stuff that we can Star Wars on all old Atari game. So, they show the kid, um, who, 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 the gateway controls and then having the gateway open up just in time for them to come on in and fire off an EMP therefore destroying the remaining sentinels even though it really doesn't matter that my time anyway because everyone else is dead in, in anyway so back to Neo I'm sorry, but it's kind of bound to run to like the real world, the people, but out the service, and this and that. So you would think that the machines would be able to, I don't know, uh, turn those messages around and shoot from the back. Then Neo make a deal with the baby god, Deus Ex, try to defeat Smith. And then we have the big epic fighting with, with the, the Smith Prime, if you will. He, he has to, uh, it's now equal to Neo with the power of the Oracle. Now, I've always wondered, I know, I know that she said that 
Det mest hittiga avsnitt ni har. Men hur jag bytte en bärning i krigen än ni har betäckt sig. Men bara om att i krigen var han. Wouldn't the addition of the oracle be considered over the top, over his equal? Wouldn't it make him like 1.5 neos in power and strength? More than that. Since Smith has the ability to copy it over to other organisms and anti plug into matrix. Would it make sense that um, the oracle powers will also go to other Smiths that automatically? I know that that's a good question. So then you see him fighting Neo. And you think that Neo will win against him, but no, he just surrenders because he told the machine gun that he would not fail. And so now he didn't fail because he, in, in forcing uh, the, in forcing the Smith Prime to absorb him. We uh, we established the link between him and the forest. The the sex. The force was able to infiltrate like a an antivirus program into it, like a close horse virus into the net the, the power of Neo. So neat the the, the copy that King Smith had the power of two Neos, but then because of the antivirus, we were able to blow up from the inside out. He said, No, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, I don't want to die and all that stuff. No, I got all the power in the Matrix, and it's going to beat the real world. Which I would like to see what would happen if. Agent Smith copied himself over multiple times in the real world. I would like to see Sentinels fight that and, and they probably win to give the so efficient because things. So anyway, it did show that he like he like blew up the names of the Smith Prime. Even the Oracle behind. Now I like this because it should that no matter what happens, you always get blown up by Neo twice in the movie so far. Just like Doug Zero in Jack Wall Z. And that's pretty cool that you do that, you do it like that. So, as you said that, Neo is defeated because the source, um, he is killed off and, um, uh, he is, um, defeated, defeated and Deus Ex takes the body and ceremoniously turns up on like a funeral, um, boat, bot, whatever you call it. Which is weird because it didn't do that with Trinity. It certainly did do with Morpheus or anybody else for that matter. Well, maybe it's like we need resurrection. And then they show when um when the whole matrix simulation gets uh we we all we we moved it if you will. It was Saudi over there with with the Oracle all fine dandy and then the um, architect comes over and, he, and she said we have a deal with all the um, people that want to be let out will they be let out 
into the second layer of um, the matrix. You know, it's all an illusion of free will, so. So, was it obesely free? And then he said something. He said, Yes, we, we became human. And though it's humans are you know, untrustworthy, and they'll turn back on you. And not, they'll turn their back on you. So, yeah. And then, I saw they make a beautiful sun sunrise or sunset. I forgot which one it was, but, um, Will Neil, will Neil come back? Oh, I think he will be. And that's where Best Rex comes into play. And we'll cover that next. But yeah, I, I like all the wire work. I like all the yeah, power stuff. Now, I, I would assume that when when Smith took over everybody, they would incorporate Sir Esterat by, by, um, um, Kong Chow. They would incorporate the Oracle, the Oracle. So I would imagine that it probably would be like the top of his game in Fort Neo. He been more like um two years already, but because you can see this already when the new is right with Smith, you know Smith has a Smith has a two nothing by the way, but he doesn't because he spits out tooth. Anyway, um, each of him or wearing a growing stuff and what. Neo was over there huffing huff and puffing, and he even scared the Smith because he could see what was happening because with the Oracle and the powers and stuff. So, yeah, it's a little bit confusing, but it's all good. I like this movie. And thank you for liking my, my discussion about the Matrix Revolution. From my birthday month for 2024. As you can tell, I give this a happy face to approval. Because this movie might, might be confusing, but it's so awesome. I love all the action, I love all the gunplay, even though it's not as good as the movies. I like the characters. I like the same man, like all the, all the people there. And, uh, you know. <coughs> I think I covered everything I want to talk about in the movie. I mean, talk about them one other day. I mean, um, if you guys like what you see here, you know, and you want to see more on my channel. Always, <clears throat> um, like, comment, share my video, and subscribe to my channel. And if you guys want, you can always um <clears throat> contact me for future stuff involving my future content on my channel. You can call me or text me at six three one. Seven oh seven three seven oh seven. Or if you, you know, I, my, that's my cell phone number. Or you can get me on Twitter or actually prefer at P Nelson Pro. Also, for the same matter, you can meet me at <coughs> my email at JJ's viewing channel at gmail.com for any for anything else. So I salute you guys and I salute you and like the matrix stuff. Anyway, um it's been fun talking about the movie. 
I don't think I like the next one, but I like to eat an enemy. No, for the segment. We actually, guys, enjoy yourself. Something better than this. And, uh, aloha, aloha. All you boys are going to the internet.